Not a very good kick. Anyway, what's up guys? It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here. And I am just finishing up a side job I've been stuck on for a while. It's been a nightmare, but that's another story. Uh, anyway, I brought home a new trailer the other day. I did a poll on the channel and asked you guys what you thought it was I was going to bring home. So here it is. You probably caught a glimpse of it in the radiator repair video if you saw that one. This is a 2010 Appalachian 15,000 pound deckover trailer. I got this to sort of upgrade, I guess you could say, from my Corn Pro trailer. I had a 12,000 pound, 18 foot deck Corn Pro, which is a great trailer and plenty heavy enough for what I was doing, uh, but it has the fenders on it, you know, so those get in the way a lot of times. So I thought the deck over would be a lot better fit for what I usually get into, hauling materials and whatnot, along with equipment. Anywho, uh, it came with a 2 and 5 16 ball hitch on here, and I hate ball hitches on equipment trailers. I believe all trailers should be pinnel hitches. That's just my preference. Uh, these are too much of a pain to line up and hitch and unhitch. Pinnels just fall right on and don't give you any problems, huh, Bubby? So anyway, the guy included... The guy included a couple pinnel rings and the factory ring that came on this trailer. So we're gonna go ahead and unbolt that ball hitch and put the pinnel ring back on it and uh, adjust the hitch on my truck to match this. Part of my line of thinking on getting a deck over trailer and a little bit bigger trailer like this is I wanna get away from pulling skid steer with the pickup truck all the time and this trailer here will cross with the dump truck so I could use the dump truck to pull around stuff if I get a bigger skid loader eventually, uh, it'd be a lot nicer to pull with a dump truck than my pickup truck. Because the pickup truck can do it. It's just, you know, why put the wear and tear on that thing when you got this bigger truck here that'll do it no sweat. The other cool thing I learned when I went and registered this trailer and transferred the title on it, she said, uh, do you want a permanent tag or do you want a regular one-year tag? I didn't know you could get permanent tags on small trailers like this, but I learned that any trailer in Pennsylvania over 10,000 pounds, she said you can get a permanent tag on, so I'll never have to pay a registration fee on this again, and I can transfer it to a different trailer one time. So that's pretty cool. It was $177, I think it was, or something like that. So that equals out to about five years of regular registration. So if you're going to keep your trailer more than five years, that's the way to go. You don't ever have to pay for it again. Meatball in his glory. Roscoe. Come here, Roscoe. Hey, Bubba. Come on. Who's my Bubba? Who's your good Bubba? Give me five. Good boy. So I've been pricing these trailers out from all kind of different manufacturers. Corn Pro, Quality Trailer, Big Tex, uh, Mortis, you name it, I've looked at it. And they're all outrageously expensive. I was getting prices anywhere from five and a half to eight and a half thousand dollars. So that uh, just kind of boggled my mind. I ended up picking this one up. I gave the guy 4,200 bucks for it. And it's got a little bit of surface rust starting and it needs a good pressure washing because it's got a little bit of algae growing on the DOT tape here. But see, that's all coming off. This thing will brighten up a good bit with a good pressure washing. And he had just put brand new, super heavy duty tires on it. They're Hercules. Yeah, the super, super deep tread on it. Really good tires. He said maybe 100 miles on those tires. So, pretty happy about that. The underside here, I don't know, the lighting's not ideal. But the underside here for a 10 year old trailer uh, is great. There's very little rust on anything. Everything uh, everything just needs a little wash down and spritz of paint. She'll be good for another 10 easy. It's uh, 
18 foot of flat usable deck space. A little under four foot of beaver tail here. While we're at it, this thing is eight foot between the rub rails and the overall width should be 102 because it's the legal limit. Looks like we're a shade under 102. Probably, I got nothing to hook on over there. Yeah, we're at 101 outside to outside. So they could have squeezed another inch out of her, but heck, what's an inch? So these trailer ramps are a thing I find a lot of fault in in most manufacturers. And these Appalachian ramps are built really well. They're fully welded on both sides, which uh, not even my Corn Pro has. The Corn Pros are just welded on one side. And that's fine, but you know, more weld the more better. The only thing that this trailer is missing that I'm sure I can add is spring assists for the ramps. Uh, my Corn Pro has those and it's really nice. Doesn't make the ramps weightless, but close to it. <laughs> Did you guys see that one? He just launched himself off of that thing. So this trailer actually has a lockable chain box lid. I can put a walk right through here. That's nice. My Corn Pro does not have any kind of lid on the chain tray. So, I've never had any problems with anybody stealing my stuff, but it's, uh, it's always been a concern. So I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people telling me I'm absolutely crazy for doing this, but let's get this ball hitch off of here and the pin will ring back on it. You know, what's really crazy about this thing is that this uh, ball coupler is rated for 21,000 pounds. I can't believe you can put something on a ball for 21K. So the ball might be rated for 21,000K, but the pinnel ring is rated for 42,000 pounds. My money's on the pinnel. I'm also raising this up a notch so that I can pull this with the dump truck and the pickup truck because the hitch on the dump truck is much higher. So I'll have to adjust the hitch on the dump on the pickup truck for this now. Guten tight. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. We're not sitting on flat ground here, but I'm 99% sure we can just take this all the way up and it probably still won't be high enough for this thing. Might end up having to get a new hitch to make this thing run both trucks.
Oh, sorry about the meatballs panting. Just those up, it looks like. I could make this all work with the equipment that I have by drilling a few new holes here for this pinnel ring. See, you only have two sets of holes that will line up in here and here. I need an in-between set, and that would get the nose of this trailer up just enough to where it would set right with this hitch still. See, if you look right now, the nose of the trailer is coming down a bit. Now this grade does slightly come up here but you know it it's not that much so to get that trailer to sit right we're gonna have to drill four new holes to get that up there uh, i'm not going to do that right this minute because i have to go get my machine but see typically when you're sitting the whole setup on a flat level grade you want the nose of the trailer to be a little bit high because when you get weight on it it'll set down level and that way everything's kosher in your setup you see my corn pro trailer here has them drilled every two inches, which gives you a lot more increments of adjustment. I just turned the lights on. We're gonna check all these lights, make sure they're working before we leave. Trailer light works, although something's goofy with this housing. I think it's got the wrong screw in it. Okay, lights work. Everything's hooked up good. Uh, we still need to bring the nose of the trailer up some, but that's a project for another day. I need to throw my chains in here and mount my license plate, and we're ready to boogie on down the road and go pick up the skid steer.
That's some pretty stuck, thick, pretty thick metal for a self-tapper to gnaw through, but we'll try. Oh yeah, she don't like that too well. So there it is, that was the first time I've pulled anything with it now. Uh, actually didn't even get to drag it home with my truck when I bought it. My buddy pulled it home with his because mine was uh, getting the exhaust manifold changed out on it. So anyway, it pulls really good. The brakes are not as touchy as my other trailer. So I don't know if they're just getting worn or what. I'll probably pop some wheels off, take a look at those. They still work, they still do the job, but uh, they could be a little tighter, I guess. And then we've got to drill out that hitch plate so we can get a little bit more height out of the tongue. And I think we'll be uh, ready to run to California and back with this thing. So there's my uh, 15,000 pound tag trailer next to my 50,000 pound tag trailer. I guess this really isn't a tag trailer, this is a gooseneck, so I think the title says low boy.
25 ton. Haven't haven't got to pull this trailer yet either. I need to get that auto car going before I can pull this thing. But I'm real happy with both. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna drop this trailer here because tomorrow I'm gonna be loading up topsoil and hopefully be able to load this thing back up and take it. Guys, check. If you guys like the new trailer, drop a comment down below. Tell me what you think. If you've got any experience with Appalachian trailers, let me know what you think. This is my first Appalachian, but I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, I was real happy with the Corn Pro I had before, and I would have liked to have got another Corn Pro, but the uh, little too much jack for me. So I found this, happy with it. Uh, I don't think I can really go wrong for the price compared to new. It's about half price, so I'm happy with it. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you next next video. Later.